Oh, remember I broke my servotronic off. Well, these guys packaged this thing like crap. Right? It was just in a box with some paper. So in shipping, it got broken off as well. Um, that makes this rack pretty worthless to me because that part cost about the same as I paid for this rack uh, if you get a new one. Um, I may be able to locate a used one at some point. I sent an email with a picture of the company I got this from on eBay. Hopefully they're responsive and just pull one off of a rack and mail it to me. But I mean, that's just more, that's more time, right? That's more days that the van's down because I cannot, there's no way I can reach in there to put that valve in with the, the rack in place. It's just too, too stupid to try to try to do. So like, it's going to be up in the air until I get a, a new fucking valve, which is if I need a new valve, they're 260 bucks. They get, <sighs> never get it right. I mean, I can't, I mean, I broke mine off, so it's not like they're, um, they're pretty fragile, but still it's annoying. Steering rack update. We need to put all this stuff aside because they filed a claim with UPS and they've already, uh, they're already sending me a whole another rack as a replacement. So super happy with that junkyard. It's a uh, wolf something or other. Oh, here we go. This is the heavy end. So I think this is the side that was on the label facing up. So this is how it should have been hopefully transported most of the time. We'll see. Um, that yard learn from their mistakes at all. I mean, they, they responded really fast, but I don't think that their customer service section communicates with the shipping department. Let's see. Oh, all got that bubble wrap. Please, 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 please. see that bubble wrap it looks like they packed some cardboard around it so good job guys our sensor is good well not sensor it's a valve right it's a valve so it's noon that gives me about an hour and a half i don't know if i can get this thing in and ready to drive to work in an hour and a half but we can at least get started um and we'll be able to test drive it tomorrow at a minimum so yeah looks good fingers okay. crossed so this is uh you know, two more day delay and it's my fault because I didn't look this stuff up beforehand. But the subframe bolts, the steering rack bolts, and the one in the steering column are torqued to yield. So they need to be replaced. The steering column one, mm, I don't think we're going to worry about that boy. We'll see. <laughs> it's because it's just not, I don't know why that one would be torqued to yield. Especially the size of it, 35 Newton meters plus 90 degrees, it shouldn't, it's not going to stretch that. Um, let me find it real quick and take a look. Yeah, so this is a, it's an M10 by one and a half. It's a 8.8 .8 hardness, so 35 plus 90. Mm, probably does yield it. It doesn't have any stretch to it though. So yeah, I'm gonna reuse that one. That one doesn't bother me at all. But the, for the rack and the subframe, the like 120 Newtons plus 180 degrees, I'm not reusing that bolt. That would be dumb. Uh, the rack, per, you know, it's arguable because it, but since there's only two bolts holding the whole rack on, I'm going to go ahead and replace those as well. All the part numbers for those are here. So here's all the torque settings for the, the bolts that I took out. And then here's the part numbers for the ones that I ordered. Uh, that's the subframe bolt, rack bolt, rack nut. This one actually is getting replaced. Now it's a zero two. I don't know what they did with it. Wednesday morning, they'll have those in stock. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, <clears throat> I can reach all those bolts with it installed. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rack in, just use the bolts dropped in from the top. So backwards um, to hold it in place or, you know, the right way, whatever, just, you know, I'm not going to torque them. I'm just going to put them on there so we can get the rack in place, get some fluid in it and test it. Right, we're not going to put it down on the wheels, we're not going to take it on the road and do anything dangerous. And then when I get the bolts on Wednesday, um, I'll swap out the subframe bolts, the rack bolts, torque them up, and we'll be, uh, we'll be good to drive, hopefully. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing but backwards. I'm going to push it in towards the passenger side, get it up level, and then slide it into place. And we have to be super careful of the, uh, the plastic end of that valve. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, if I break this thing off, I'm going to cry. Oh, I'm dumb. i got to drop the subframe down before I do this. 
<laughs> All right, let me get a jet. In from the top. Originally the nuts were at the top, but we're only putting this in to hold it in place because we're replacing these bolts. This is just to keep it from moving. This one won't work like that. This one will have to do it on the bottom with the nut on the top. Now I can get the, I can connect the hoses, connect the steering column, get this back in the air so it doesn't crush me to death <laughs> and get these bolts in um, and test it out. Okay, so same thing here, putting these bolts in. These are bolts are getting replaced. The only reason I'm putting them in now is to make sure this doesn't drop down um, and hold it in place so we can get this pump get the engine running, get the steering rack tested, make sure it's not leaking out of these ends before we put the tie rods back on. So there, just finger tight because we're not driving it. It'll be good like that. Okay, now we're on to that connection. It's especially with that sun there, it's going to be hard to see, but yeah, so up here, this guy has to go back on the the lid where my finger is, and you have to line up with the bolt hole. So right now we have bolt hole is right here where that this finger is scraping across it this one uh, yeah not lined up so i'm gonna need to rotate it mm, i wish i could remember which direction i need to rotate it i'll have to look in the cab real quick this it looks like because i didn't go around so this i'll have to get my keys but i'm going to straighten the wheel out and try to get it in with my fingers and i'll move it to get a wrench on it so I can see it from this side. See there's the, the cup right there, and then here's my two bolt holes. So it's really close. It doesn't really want to... Oh, 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 there it goes. It's starting to slide over. Because it's a triangle. If I wiggle... Oh, there we go. Wiggle it down. Okay. So <laughs> now we just got to figure out if I can get the bolt up in there. Which side it goes in. It should go in. Hmm. This, I hope it goes in from this side. That'd be easy. No, that's the threaded side. It goes in from the whole other side. So I might be able to get that started with one hand from here. I don't know. Yeah. So there's the just get behind that line right there. And if it's down far enough, it should slide all the way through. But, you know, I can start threading it on, and then I can use the wheel to rotate the whole rack. It's not a lot of space. This sucks to be on this side of the car. The sun's in my eyes. Every time I move my arm. All right, well, you get the idea of it. We need to wiggle that around so the bolt pushes through, threads on, rotate it to where you can get a wrench on it, torque it to 35 Newtons, and we're good. Oh, I need to pull that back out. I want blue Loctite on it. Okay, so last thing to do before checking for leaks is to get these lines back in. I remember the, light, the, the lower one gets pinched on by the upper one, so. This upper will go in place, lower will slide in behind it, uh, and then when we tighten this bolt down, it'll it'll pinch that lower line, this guy where it's supposed to be. So yeah, let's get these plugs out. 
They were both a 17 millimeter. Unplug. Underneath like that, right underneath the fitting. Ten millimeter, bolt that on. We'll put fluid in and start her up. Okay, so here's the plan. Since I don't know any better, uh, so I'm gonna get fluid in here and then turn the rack left and right uh, without the car running, just to see if I can push any air bubbles out that way. Um, and then we'll run it and see how it sounds. And see if anything leaks. Okay, just see what happens. It's a little over full, uh, but we'll turn it. I don't remember our tie rods and then nothing that's connected, so this should be centered right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be all kinds of areas like that. It's probably freaking out. Okay, the second go around dropped it down quite a bit. And these, uh, you do screw it on to get the level right and then back off. So, looks like, yeah, we're right about at the max line. So we'll run it there. Um, see if it makes any noises, see if it draws down. We, sunlight's bright enough, we can kind of see the level right there where my finger is. Um, yeah, let's hope this thing doesn't slip into drive and go rocketing off of the jack stands. That'd be fun. Look at all those lights. Ooh, it's quiet. Hold the fluid down a bit. Nothing's spraying out. I don't see any drips from the lines. All right, quick. turn it a bit. Dead quiet. It turns further than it can when the wheels are on because of it just bump stops. And the control arm, well, not the control arms, the steering knuckles, but it stops. Probably right, one, or flat. So that should be straight. I don't see any drips. Yeah, I think we're business. The pump's not making a peak. We'll uh, check the fluid level. Show it off, check the fluid level. Yeah, buddy. I need a rag. Okay. Now we're just below the min line, so we're doing for a little more in there. A little tiny, just a splash. Perfect, right in the middle. So we'll let that hang out. Uh, find out in the morning. Well, yeah, I'm not gonna look at it tonight when I get home because it'll be dark. 
but so what we have left tomorrow i'll get the the, the tie rod inner and outers on and in place um, we'll get this whole wheel arch back on or the fender liner that is get the fender liner back on uh what else i think that's it it's just those two things and then we're left with the those not it's not a skid plate but just the um the skin underneath right needs to go back on but that's not going back on until we replace the bolts so we have steering rack bolts bolt and nut new and rear subframe bolts will be new the front subframe bolts we didn't take apart so we don't need to replace those just the rear ones and maybe i'll start it up again tomorrow and uh see if we can get some more any air pockets out but it sounded quiet i didn't see any leaks i think uh i think we got a winner Ooh, you know what we have to make sure that this line people have this rub on the axle and then they lose their power steering again because it defaults to highway mode so when we get that uh, fender liner back on we'll have to make sure that's clipped up and it's not going to rub ever that's annoying yeah, this will be a short morning we're just getting ready to have our new bolts uh, for tomorrow in the meantime um, we can put everything back together but the the skin on the bottom and the, the wheels themselves so this guy's gonna go back in and we're using my old ones because there wasn't any play in them and somehow those pickle forks didn't tear the boots down here if this boot was torn you know they'll just wear out super fast and you'd want to get new ones anyway so get the boot off as far as we can so we can reach that I don't have a crow's foot adapter for my torque wrench like the dealership would use now this this end that goes in there is uh, 100 foot pounds and then this nut on the bottom of here is 90 foot pounds and we're going to lock tight both of them just because we can and then this washer uh goes out like this it goes over it um, not this way this way so make sure it seats correctly So the, it was spinning it instead of going on with the impact, and we don't want to spin that ball joint a whole bunch since we're reusing the old one. Um, so 21 millimeter and the T40 uh, to hold it. Once you get it tightened in enough, yeah, it won't spin now. But we'll still just do it this way. Because same thing, I don't have a throw foot adapter. For the torque wrench, maybe I'll get some of those one day, but stuff like this, I just never really use it. And once that's there, this one's 90 newtons, so it's plenty. Now for the boot, right, there's a little right there, see how it pops in? So it pops into a little groove. This ring goes back on. This one's reusable. Just like that, no problem. And then I've got uh, a new crush type for that, but I don't want to try to put it on like this because we're fully extended, right? This would be stretched out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the, the wheel back to the right um, so that this is a little bit compressed. It'll help hold it in place while we crimp on the new ring. So I picked these up. Uh, here's the old one, right? Pinch style. It's always been a pain in my butt, and I haven't had nice stuff in the past. I've always used O-rings, so they're not O-rings, uh, like the screw type, like worm clamps, right? That are that just suck. Now these, there's not a lot of space in there. We don't want that big thing hanging off, and we want to be a little nicer to the car, uh, even though we aren't always. So I got these. They're huge, you know, for for much more than one application right i didn't want to have to to guess which size this was and then i got these cut these crimpers for them uh they have the side cut because it's low profile in there so we grab this big boy and we just cinch it down until it's uh this size and it's kind of a squeeze in there so we want to make sure that the boot is over yep and there's actually i like there's an o-ring underneath that uh, which I've never seen before, so that's pretty interesting. Um, it looks like we don't have anything above that's going to be in the way, so let's go ahead and put it like this. That is a lot extra, maybe we should cut it. Okay. 
now if we cut it it'll have something sharp right if we don't cut it it's not sharp we just need to squeeze it down and clip those into a hole yeah, it's pretty easy actually so now that's that's on there it's pretty tight i'm gonna make sure that it's completely underneath itself not sticking out funny that seems flat enough I kind of bumped it up some. I wonder if I can go one more click. One more click in on those. No, no, no. There's no way I can do that by hand. So we'll crimp it and just see if uh, we feel good about it. I feel like it should be tighter one, but we, might also, we got more. We can always cut it back out. Yeah, that worked. I mean, that's on there. I can't I'm pulling on that pretty hard. I can't get it to budge. So I think the real test, let's turn the steering wheel back the other way and see uh, if it pops off with all that tension. Yeah, it looks good. It held it on. Same thing, I can still pull on it. It feels solid. So, yeah, I'm not worried about that. It worked just fine. So, now all I need to do is uh, the exact same thing on the other side, and then at least we'll be further back together before our parts show up. So, went and picked up the bolts this morning. Uh, they had them all ready to go right at nine, like they said. Uh, $17.77 for two bolts and two nuts for the steering rack, and two bolts for the subframe, since we only unbolted two of them. I think the best way is going to be just on the ground facing up. Uh, that should be in frame, <laughs> I hope. And then 120 newton meters, not foot pounds, newtons. Which isn't really that much for those of you uh, that are metrically declined, it's close to 90 foot pounds. So, same thing, about the same as wheel lug torque. And that's a big M14 bolt. So, yeah, there we go, 120 newtons. Now, yield torque on this particular bolt is, uh, don't quote me, but it's somewhere near 215-ish. Um, newtons so this 180 isn't a huge stretch because the starting torque is so low i think um what they probably did is they calculated what torque guarantees that were were pushed together even with the weight of the thing on it so we're just going to go until those marks line up so we're going to bring this black mark around to line up with this gold one there and i can't yeah and that'll be 180 degrees it's a 21 millimeter socket and even though I've snapped a couple of these things in the past, I'm going to use my Chinesium breaker bar. That'll be left. Wait. Yeah, now I'm going to pull. It should only be three flats if you didn't have a way to mark it. I dislike yield bolts. So, one turn. Two and a half. Yeah, I can go further on that. Oh, man. Least favorite part of the day. Ah. Almost. Oh, you can feel it. This is a tiny bit away. Yeah, you can you can feel the bolt start to stretch. There we go, 180 degrees. Yeah, it's an interesting feeling if you haven't done it before. Uh, you turn the bolt and it, it starts to get a tiny, tiny bit easier. Uh, it seems counterintuitive, but uh, it works. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. I won't film it. And then we'll do the same thing 
up here for the, the steering rack. I'll go ahead and film that one as well. My, my video's long enough by now anyway, it just doesn't matter. Okay, I'm showing the passenger side because it's easier. It's 18 millimeter on both sides, so I got my 18 on the top. And this needs to stay pretty much where it's at for us to get the angle correct. And then we'll try to, hopefully that's a good enough view of the, of the bolt. Um, yeah. So 18 millimeter nut, 18 millimeter on the bolt. We're gonna go, first step is 90 newtons, which we're already set to on the wrench. <laughs> it's at an angle, and stuck under here. It's just not easy. It's not bad, but it's not fun either. I'm trying to keep this perfectly lined up. I, like I can't even see the bolt. I don't want to. I guess I can just watch the wrench and see if it moves. It seems like the nut's not moving anymore. So, yeah, I didn't even have my hand on the wrench and it didn't budge. It's, it's definitely still, still on the nut, so we'll just watch it, use it as a gauge uh, from here on out. This is just, it's really cumbersome to try to do it with one hand. Mark it. No, this time we only need we only need 90 degrees. So I'm gonna mark on this flat because that will be 90 degrees from this point. So when those two line up, we've done our 90 degrees and we're good to go. I'm watching my other wrench, the nut still hasn't moved. Looks like about halfway. This is a six pointed socket, so I don't have as much wiggle room. There we go. And then, yeah. That'll do it, 90 degrees. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And we gotta put on the put the skirt over all of this, put the wheels on, and we can test drive it. Checked the fluid level. Um, nothing had, had drained out since the last time I looked, so it should be okay. And then wheel nut torque is 160 newtons on these for those that are still interested in the last part. See how mad it is. Oh, way less lights than last time. Ooh. Refill ad blue. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Put some in. We must not have put enough in. Oh, rusty brakes. That's awful. Something about the traction control. So, since we moved stuff around with everything off and cycled the ignition a few times, we may have to hook this thing back up. And... Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> it's lying. We can clear all that. Mm, TPS, you're also lying. Actually, no, no strange feelings. The steering feels good. It's not making noises. It's not jerking around at me. Uh, so I think we're in business now. Next order, we'll have to clear the stabilization fault. Otherwise, I think we don't have traction control. Uh, maybe. And then we'll double check our air pressure and all the tires before we reset the monitoring system. Because this one, it uses the ABS sensors and vibration. I don't know how it senses that, but it does. Maybe something with the suspension uh, to determine if there's a problem with the wheel. So uh, that's pretty easy to do. We just check air pressure and then reset it in here. We'll do that first. The okay, pressure's right here inside the driver door. We got 44 PSI for the front and 49 PSI for the rear. Yeah, so this is our culprit. Now, as soon as I clear, if I clear it, as soon as I turn the steering wheel, I got a mechanical failure for the steering angle sensor, which turns off the ABS and traction control and causes the TPMS, everything. So probably maybe uh, there's an adaptation we need to do after replacing a rack like this. Okay, so this can be found on Rostec's uh, website. I just took a quick 
picture of it because that's easier for me than printing. So clearly, uh, you can see by my reverse camera, the wheels are straight right now. It thinks we're turning. That's why it's freaking out. So we're going to follow those directions in order. Uh, so to do one full turn to the right, one full turn to the left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so awful. <laughs> and then drive forward, keeping the wheel straight. We're on flat level ground. Dun, 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 just kind of driving, and the wheel hasn't moved. That's probably enough. Probably. Now, oh boy. Stay on three. Close that controller. Three is brakes. Yeah, yeah, you're mad. Security access is in the bottom right. Let me get this closer. 16. And it wants a code. Code for this one is 40168. Now it even tells you. <laughs> Do it, sure. Basic settings. Group number needs to be 060. Click go. Adjustment OK, steering angle 0, and A. Field 2 should say OK, which it does. Done, go back. Oh, and look at that. It snapped the, that thing straight, so that's good. Make sure the setting was successful. <clears throat> Check the sensor again. Go to measuring blocks. Then we're going to put in zero, oh, group four. Steering angle zero. Yep, everything looks good. Check field one between negative five and positive 1.5. Good, so that's good. So now this is just measuring. We already did the adaptation. When we turn, oh yeah, look at that. Zero, 90-ish, 90-ish. Cool, so that should fix all of our stuff. You don't, I don't know you. Okay. Neat, well let's take it down the road. completely normal. Well, I'm happy with that. That's, uh, that's a huge cost savings. So originally, when I was looking at remanufactured racks, they were oh, anywhere from 580 to you know, upwards of 700 $800 a piece with anywhere from a $300 to $500 core cost. Right, and then I had my broken sensor, and for all I know, like if I were, uh, if I rebuilt these racks as a company, and somebody sent me one with a broken Servotronic, I'd tell them the core's no good, because that's a, that's a huge part. Especially like, maybe they can find used ones and put them in, but if you're a reman, people would expect that to be functioning and not used, right? So, who knows, <laughs> it could have been a really costly repair, but essentially we were 309 for, ooh, there's a deer. Or is that a dog? This is a, a big-ass dog, I think. What the hell is he doing out? Is he a deer or a doge? That's a dog. That's a deer. Yeah, that's a little deer. <laughs> that's a, that's a, yeah, so it's always the young ones out in the day. Anywho. Yeah, so 309 for the rack plus whatever the tax was. Um, they had free shipping on it. Um, they were super fast to ship me a second one. So now I'm with the bolts and with the, oh, we bought overall, because of the little experiment, we bought $120 in fluid. No, we bought $90 in fluid. We went through three cans of it and I got a little tiny bit left. So 90 plus the rack. I mean, we're less than $450 all in on parts, right? We had to spend some time in pain and agony. We had to drive the truck for a while. But overall, that's a good price. And the, the upside of that as well is that now I have a rack sitting in the garage. I also have a used rack from the junkyard. Now, I'm not a dirt ball, so I'm not going to hand, the, hand my bad rack back to UPS as part of the claim, even though uh, I think a lot of people would do that. But either way, we might be able to pull that rack apart uh, and see what kind of seals are in it. You know, maybe it's something that we can fix up on our own and just have it here at home waiting for us. Otherwise, if something happens again, we at least have a core we can send in and see what they say about that servotronic. <laughs>